There is a prayer session right here after dinner, I believe. And it's online or not? It's maybe not online. It's online, yes, of course. All right. And I, I knew that. <laughs> right. So <laughs> thank you very much. Um, so this discussion of death, about death. What a gift that we can die, really. Imagine if nobody dies, no one dies. I don't think I want to live in that world. <laughs> you know, it's just... Also, I don't want to meet somebody from the 8th century. <laughs> I don't want to meet some medieval... What are they called? Um, the barbarians, like no, no, like they they rob people and go from Norway or Denmark, huh? Vikings. I don't want to meet a Viking. Imagine Asian guy, <laughs> thousand year old Viking. It's not going to be a good day for me. No, I think the beauty of death. It's so good that they all died. It's so good that we will all die. Our damage will be limited. Mm. Everything evens out like a clean slate. <laughs> clean slate. Also, it makes everything so precious. Whether you're a spiritual person or not, Death does something, for sure. Mm, and you have to face it. It's the equalizer, the ultimate equalizer. It doesn't matter who you are. You have to die. We must die. <laughs> mm. And now, for us, such a great teaching. When you die, now we believe in next life, but what goes from this life to the next? The body does not go for sure. It cannot. <clears throat> Mind also cannot go from this life to the next. Human mind right now human understanding, human emotion, human preference. Next life, if I'm a cockroach, very different mind, very different mind. Seems like nothing goes from this life to the next. As if death shows us our emptiness, whether we want or not. Here, death is in reference to time. Time is running out. We must act now. Because um, one of the fundamental ignorance that all of us have, without having been taught, we just have it. That is this belief that there is a tomorrow. There is a belief that I was there yesterday. I will be, I am here today. I will be here today. I will be there somewhere tomorrow. This blind faith in continuity. Everything will be, everything will be fine, this belief. We even celebrate it, saying, wow. That person is so optimistic. <laughs> oh, 
all is well, the end is well, right? Mm. We not only have it inherently, but we are taught to think like this. Everything will be fine. Why? Don't know. It just have to be. It just have to be fine. Now, you, are, you start asking questions, it will fall apart. The romanticism will turn bleaker and bleaker and bleaker. This kind of thing, Chandrakirti called it Matak Chikbu Nyamgawa. He said, when you leave things as they appear, when you do not analyze, they look so beautiful. It's Matak Chikbu Nyamgawa. And that's, that beauty is not its inherent beauty, but from your ignorance. Your ignorance that, that wants to ignore, that does not perceive its true nature and wants to ignore it anyway. So contemplating like this upon death, we come face to face about and this um, undeniable fact that you will not continue. We will not continue. That's it. We believe in life after death, but we don't believe in a self that goes from this life to the next. Now, they talk about continuity. We, we cannot. I was never in my past life. I was never last year. Even yesterday, even this morning. Each moment, whatever I am, is completely new and changing. That's why it's fake, because it's not stable, it's changing. Truth should not change. Even in an ordinary world, when we ask someone something and they keep changing their answer, we cannot believe them. Not trustworthy, not true. Oh, sorry, let me change the internet. I'm on the weaker link. You can hear me, Gustavo? All right. My, my screen froze a little bit. You seemed so interested that you, you decided not to move for like half a minute. <laughs> Truth has to be non-negotiable. Or else is not the truth, not the reality. You might think why? If you think like that, then study Nagarjuna's root verses of Madhyamika. There, when you begin to bear, right now we just so our our confusions are so chaotic that we don't even know. Which one is the sort of the layer, which one is on the surface? It's like meditating for the first time. When we meditate for the first time, like really properly try, we don't even know the what kind of distractions are there. There are distractions that happen very deep down. There are distractions that happen on the surface that like a very verbal thoughts. Distractions that arises, you know, like. Um, yes, so contemplation on death is very important. Mm, in this sense, oh, time is running out. So important. Especially when you realize you yourself will not be there. You yourself will not be there. So whatever you want to do, better do it now. Tomorrow, a coconut hits your head and you, your behavior, everything changes. <laughs> you, you no longer want to be Buddhist. You want to, I don't know, go to Peru or somewhere. Understand? So, 
Trincona Michiche, Devar Duba reminds this. Oh, sorry. Today, at least, I shall not die so rash to lull myself with words like these. My dissolution and my hour of death will come to me. Of this, there is no doubt. 58. That's it. We should really read this again and again, this type of stanzas. Thala Mijik Suij is the next one. Who gives me, well, who can give me fearlessness? What sure escape is there from this? It's certain that I'm going to die. So how can I relax my mind at ease? Yes. Even if the whole world tells you, oh, don't worry, everything will be fine. You know, it's not, we don't know. That's the truth. So, yeah. Mm, as our teachers say, tomorrow or the next life, who knows which one will come first. These are really good contemplations. Mm, or in a day, mm, contemplate in the morning is like taking birth, a new birth, and by evening, getting old. And <clears throat> Sunset, think of death. Don't think of useless things like remembering your ex. So don't do that. Think of death. Like, this is it. If you do that, sunsets are very potent. They have a, they have a, sunsets have this, sunsets have this capacity to bring some urgency within us. If you can use it. That's why they're so beautiful. Because they, change visibly in front of us and it's a symbol of ending ending of light so precious <clears throat> so he's right who told us to who, who can really tell us don't worry everything will be fine and why should we believe them who can really tell us ah you will not die today tomorrow one month. The only <laughs> assurance they can give is, I will not kill you. Even that, you cannot really believe. You know. mm. So he's right when he says in the last stanza that we read before, 57, I believe, where he said, um, if when we are walking, it's a kind of a treacherous road way, and you know you could fall down. Um, it's not like a life-threatening, but still, if you could fall down and break break your limbs, you'll be very careful. You'll be you'll be extremely careful. So he says, if that is the case, then why aren't we being careful? of this, of falling into this um, chasm, is it? Yes? How do you pronounce, how do you say that? Chasm, chasm. I always, I get torn between, is it chasm or chasm? I know it's not chasm, but I don't know. It's always like, there's some doubt. There's the Indian in me tells me like, oh, it could be chasm. <laughs> They don't say that, they say chasm, I think. Chasm. Why aren't you being careful, he says. He just, he just doesn't understand it, he says. Why are we not thinking about this? Same logic now. Before when we were talking about now too. After death, is there a life or not? 50-50, maybe, maybe not. If there isn't, good. You don't lose anything, you don't gain anything. It's done. But if there is, you better, you better be pre prepared. Right?
please read till the end of this chapter from 58 till 65. <clears throat> Ichin kore dunga lengi pertale hirango. Coba nanti cangcut tang. Jadi salah. Semcut tang. Di sini tu kita jawab jadi. Semcut pember sebala kawi jadi hirango. Cuma kunci sanggir tamu jadi salah. Semcut dunga mantan lah. Cuci tuan batu so. Mengintasi. This stanza is so good. Munchi yong to shipale. This number is it? Sixty. Of life's experience, all seasons past. What is left to me? What now remains? Munchi nyong te shipales.
when we are given the opportunity to practice, there's always something else to do. There's always something interesting to do. We are attached to those things. And he says, surely for many lives, first of all, we, we did not meet proper teachers. And even when we did, we must not have practiced or else we wouldn't be like this. We must have broken their, not followed their instructions. And even in this life, our teacher teaches us to transform our mind, whereas we, we relish, we really like being confused, being swept away. <laughs> we really like it, being swept away, being subject to chaos. It's, it's what we like, it's exciting. So we do not follow their words. So he said, how many things have you done like that? Where are they now? All those things that were so important to you at that moment that you decided not to pay heed to the advices of Buddha, where are they now? Is it still so important to you? But because the teachings of Buddha, the advice is still important, always was. These are good tools. These are meant for our own self-reflection. Use this text like a proper um, self-help. if you want to call it that. These are all supposed to be internal discussion, that you are supposed to use this, this reasoning. So that was what now? Making offering, prostration, and purification, confession and refuge. Now, uh, the next then comes um, rejoicing, rejoicement, being happy for someone else's happiness. Stanza number one, two, and three, four, yeah, until, until the fourth stanza is about rejoicement. Mm. Rejoicing everything. Merits of beings that keeps them out of lower realms, that's good. Merits of beings that <clears throat> gives them joy in, in human life, that's good. I rejoice in that. He says, joyfully, happily make rejoicement. And of course, then merits of sentient beings that, that is going to take them to Nirvana, like that of Saravakas. Arhats, perfect, couldn't be happier. Merits, merits of um, the Buddhas, merits of Bodhisattvas, and merits of Bodhicitta that wishes to benefit all sentient beings. All of these we rejoice in. In the sixth chapter, the chapter of uh, tolerance, did we already get there? 
where I'm talking, maybe where <clears throat> Shanti Deva is asks, when he's talking about jealousy, well, why do you get jealous? He says, don't you want beings to be happy? So they find their own happiness. You didn't have to do anything, he says. <laughs> you don't have to provide wealth. They got their own wealth. You don't have to provide them with company. They got really nice company. You don't have to give them fame. They, get, they got their own fame. That's like someone else doing your duty now. Someone else doing what you want for them. So he says, shouldn't you rejoice now? That's what you want. What kind of bodhisattva are you that get jealous of sentient beings? Very sort of frugal, very meager accomplishments. He's right. Right this moment, when we say, I want to liberate all beings, it really is all beings. It really is people in this temple, each one of us. It really is all of you here. It really is everybody, every human being. On this earth, how many billions there are? You're saying, I want the final liberation for all of them. Terrorist, rapist, molesters, all of them. It's not easy, especially when someone have done things to you, but they cannot be excluded. All of them, I must, I must liberate all of them. For this to really happen, you need to understand that there, there are no good people or bad people. There, there is no such thing in, in karma. It's just conditions, conditionings. So you really have to come out from this dualistic shell that we have. Then we can make rejoicement truly make rejoicement to sentient beings and their accomplishments. Uh, because of course, we are aware of their shortcomings, but we also are aware of the good side. So we rejoice the good sides. Rejoicement um, is again also a very big antidote to um, jealousy. Jealousy, wow. Who is there anyone here who has never experienced jealousy in their life? Really, I want to give you something, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like a nice mug from a museum, I don't know, like something. Wow, jealousy, that, 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 one is, that one is tough. All the rest like anger and this, they are nothing compared to jealousy. Again, then you make rejoicement. You make rejoicement and Whatever story you have to make, stories that, that can be true, not just any story. Like you could go back to what we were discussing this morning and thinking, I don't know, maybe this, this person, that's, that, that's sort of, you know, I don't know. This person could be an enlightened being. How would I know? 
I cannot read their mind. That kind of way of thinking that we had in the morning, like with the prostration for arrogance, pride, same here is with jealousy, you can use that. Or you could use thinking about um, how beings have been your parents. Some of you, if it works, perfect, very strong. Or how each beings, each one of us have been fathers of all the, all the rest of us. Gustavo has been our daddy for so many lifetimes. You have to translate it like that, Gustavo. <laughs> Say it. Like, I have been your daddy <laughs> to, to, to all the Portuguese listeners. It's true. I mean, I believe it. Just what Buddha said, he has no reason to lie. I don't see any political or <laughs> any reason. Why would he say that? Other than it makes sense. If I was there like millions of lives ago, if there was a life of me, has to have a parent maybe, most probably, right? So why not? Why not Gustavo? What's so bad about him? <laughs> He's in a cool band. He translates, long hair, mustache and beard. Probably is kind of tall. I don't know, yeah. I don't <laughs> met him personally, but you know what I mean. So if it works for you like this, thinking like this, that all beings have been your friend, that also is good. Or if you could think all beings have been my child, my children at some point, and if you're a father and a mother, that could work very well too. Um, you have to find your angle. You cannot just recite these words and expect it to work. You have to find a method with which you can work with your, you know, um, your, with which you can work your mind. It's just how it is. You have to put effort. Or else these, stand, these standards are very vague. And all the merit of beings that takes them out of lower realms, so, so vague. <clears throat> also, it's good to come out of very one dimensional perception of people. You know, we have that when we dislike someone, we have a very narrow mind, narrow vision of them. And it's good to good to have percept have good to think. Well, their parents must have a very different perception. Their children must have very different. Their best friends must think they are the best kind of people. You know, all these shifts the way we the, our it it uh, it loosens our rigid rigidness, and maybe then we can attempt to rejoice and this has to be done you cannot enter into dhamma practitioner with a lot of jealousy on mind the next is then requesting to turning the wheel of dharma number stanza number fifth <clears throat> hmm. this is also very important personally it is this willingness to receive, willingness to learn, willingness to change, that's what it really is. When you are open, when you, um, when you truly seek, that is requesting to turn the will of Dharma. And here we visualize that we are doing this to an enlightened being like a Buddha or Bodhisattva. Uh, and we also pray that when the next Buddhas, when they will appear, may I also request teachings from them. Maybe, may I be the first one to request teachings from them. May I be the last one, or maybe, you know, like saying, may I be the last one to request teachings from them. Why not? So, <clears throat> 
Um, yeah, so that's very important. Teachings have to be requested. Please recite this stanza. Number five. John, I'm going to show you. So, thank you. That's all. Talmud, and so on. Simjin, don't mind. <clears throat> it's almost like if no one would have requested Shakyamuni to teach, he would not have taught. Because then it would have been not wanted for us to not do um, yeah they do not teach when teachings are not wanted. Then requesting the enlightened beings to remain long, equally important remain long, mm, to live long. Practice mm, enlightened beings, they teach in many different ways. It doesn't always have to be them sitting straight um, and speaking, them just existing, breathing, such a teaching. Recently, Jabja Thanguru Rinpoche passed away. And also one of my main teacher, um, uh, Ludin Kenshin Rinpoche passed away. He was 90. I think they were both in their 90s. I did not go to see my teacher after I disrobed, so embarrassed. So I didn't see him since last eight years, no, 10 years, something like that. But just knowing he's there, that was enough. Knowing that he's teaching, liberating people. Mm. My teacher, he had given full ordination to more than, I think, 20,000 monks. And how many ordination to monks, novice monks and nuns? Who knows? It was a real wheel of Dharma, Lutin Khen Nambuchi. So every time I pass sort of from nearby, I know he's there. Even if I'm blind, the sun is shine, shining. And that, was, that was quite comforting to know. He's there. So we really have to request um, Dharma teachers, our, <clears throat> especially this kind of people. First of all, we have to request Buddha, enlightened Buddhas to remain long. Um, and our teachers to remain long because it it really uh, 
Have you been to a place where the main teacher have already passed away? It's like an empty shell then most of the time. You know, there's a lot of, you can still feel the blessings, the energy, but it's, it's um, there is a sense of being late. You're late now. Uh, <clears throat> so, when, during the time of Buddha, one day when Buddha and Ananda, most, most of the monks, they went begging. So Buddha was sitting near a stupa with Ananda and he tells Ananda that if an enlightened being like me, if I, you know, if I'm requested, I can live for a one aeon. He said, I can live as long as in one aeon. It's all illusory for me. Three times. And it is said due to our collective demerit of sentient beings. He, Ananda did not hear anything. He didn't understood what Buddha was talking about. He also did not ask him, what do you mean? So he, he just let it be. And then soon after Buddha announced, I'm going to die. Um, soon. And a young boy who wanted to meet the Buddha and who really wanted to receive teachings. He goes to the Buddha, receives teachings, and he thinks this, this person must live. This being must live. Each day is so precious. Each moment of this being, <coughs> this man being alive is so worthwhile. So he requests Buddha. And on his request, Buddha says, I will live for three months, three more months. That's it. What merit to be able to do that, to ask the Buddha, can you live for three more months? So, uh, we make aspiration now. May I be able to do this? May I be able to do the right thing at the right moment, in the right moment? And also request all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in all directions, all the noble teachers, practitioners, Mm, to live long. Mm. Here in the stanza, he says, until sentient beings exhaust, you must live long. For countless of aeons, you must live long. This this is a very good way of thinking and asking. Mm. These are the type of prayers that can never come true, but it's very important to make. Please recite the sixth, isn't it? Yeah. When you go to see these teachers, like such a teaching, anybody, just say it. Please live long. It's simple, simple things to do. One of my teacher, he passed away last year too. They were to Gurumbuji. What a man.
Tongsa Kinsa Rinpoche was um, talk, um, talking about him. There's a recording somewhere. Someone should get it and publish it. So good. Um, Pewa Tuku is recognized by the previous Tongsa Kinsa to be a Lama of a monastery. But he was so poor from such a poor family, like what do you call it, dirt poor? Yeah, <laughs> he didn't even have a proper place to stay. That the monastery didn't accept him. <laughs> such a poor. <laughs> so anyway, so he mostly stayed in Zongsa and he would, I heard that during winter times, and like sometimes he would, um, he liked to sleep with the cattle, you know, it's warm. He, he spent like that, he, and he studied, learned from Tongsa Kinsi, of course, many other masters. And he would serve Rinpoche. When Kinsi Rinpoche would go here and there, he would be the one holding the reins of Kinsi Rinpoche's horse. When in 19, around 1957, 8, Tongsa Kinsi decided suddenly to go on pilgrimage to central Tibet. Pevatoku was one of those few people who was allowed to come. Um, they spent time in Lhasa. And then one day, Tongsa Kinsi decides to go to India. Um, Pevatoku He's so sure that he's also going to India. What is he going to do? Staying in Tibet. It's 19, around 1958. Of course, if Rinpoche is going, he's going. But it is said that as they were they were traveling, and as I think, yeah, then the Potala Palace was all like no longer visible, something like that. Kids should you to told Pewa Tuku, he said, Tuku, give me the rain now. From here, I ride the horse by myself. And Pewa Tuku gave it back and he didn't know what, 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 what did he meant. So, so Kenzo Shodiluru kept riding the horse. Pewa Tuku started walking and he, he said, what are you doing? I'm coming with you. I said, no, you're staying here. You're not coming with me. And then as they were leaving, Pewa Tuku started crying. And it said that Kinsu Shujilodu turned around one last time and he said, Tuku, relax, just relax. Something like that, like everything is fine, relax. And then he left. And that's what he practiced his whole life, to relax. To <laughs> just relax, everything is fine. This is amazing, right? How amazing is that? Years ago, when Sakya Tichin came to Dongsar to give teaching, Sakya Tichin is that guy in the middle next to Dalai Lama. Um, Pewa Tuku was also there. This I witnessed myself. He off, when they were parting, he offered something to Sakya Tichen and he said, please never forget me, something like that. What a thing to say. Please do not forget me. So, requesting to live long. And it doesn't have to be some literature. You don't have to read something. I, I, I never, I don't really have a, anything to read for Zong Sekhi actually. Never felt the need. 
Recently, a teacher asked me, like, how do you, do you pray to Kinshichu Lodu? I said, yes, I do. So how do you pray? I just say Kinshichu Lodu. You know, they said, I don't know, what is, what, do you, what kind of, what do you need something? Anyway, he said, you recite this, so I will recite that. But still, I know this. <clears throat> just say, please live long. That's enough. Then, now, it's almost like he's, uh, we're sharpening our compassion. Like he's, right before taking the vow, now we're done with eight branches. That's it. These are the eight branches of um, practices that is required before taking bodhicitta. Um, so if you want to take bodhicitta by yourself, just recite from the second chapter. And if it is a lot, pick up a few stanzas for the offering. Anyway, prostration is only one or two stanzas. Uh, what is the refuge? Um, purification, you know, pick a few stanzas like that and just recite it like this. Then take the vow yourself. Good enough. Um, anyway, so here, Dhawan oh, well, now the Buddhist, Bodhicitta aspirations. Oh, dedication, sorry. Then this dedication. Dedication now, all of the merit that we dedicate. This is also important to make sure, first of all, that our selfish mind does not again steal the merit from sentient beings. These, all these things that we did today, these are meant for the enlightenment of all beings, not even for our own enlightenment, to be honest. It's for them. So then not to get swayed by things like, Oh, may I find peace? May I find my path and all that? None of those things. May I live long? May I have, be free of suffering? Definitely not like may he or she sort of fall in love with me. None of those things. Just dedicate to us the liberation of all beings. That's it. Don't even think about, don't even doubt. Why would you even think, what should I do this or no, 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 just Dedicate everything to us, the liberation of beings. As he says here, I guess I should read. Stanza number seven. Um, through um, through these, through, through my performance of these activities, these um, branches, whatever merit that I have gathered, accumulated. May it remove all sufferings of all sentient beings. That's it, as the end of aspiration. This is so good. Of course, if you want elaborate things, you can read the 10th chapter. 10th chapter is chapter of aspiration. It's wonderful, just read it. You have to train like this. To not wish for her, to not pray for yourself. <coughs> I'm sure it's not easy. It has to be done. Every time you have an urge to pray for something that is for yourself, Mm, recite these. Um, as Shantideva says in the eighth chapter, sentient beings, we have been working for our own happiness and all we got was samsaric suffering. Enlightened ones work for the happiness of others and all they get, all they got was all 
the joy, supreme joys, bliss. So it really does seem that if you really want to have happiness, <laughs> you see, Solonis used to call it, what was it? Like a clever, clever selfishness, you know, clever way of being, Bodhisattva way of being selfish. If you really want to be happy, seek for the happiness of others. You will become happy. It really is like that. Um, then, of course, more aspirations now, detailed aspirations. <sighs> until stanza 17th. Eight till 17th. Don't be jisit, ni suy kyo chi parto ni. Men da men ba ni da da te ne o chi parso. Sendang kum ki char pap te, te dan kum bi ne pa sal, mughe kal pa parmi se, tani se dan kum te jo. Tani ma se dar jo te. Tum chi chong, sim jin kum chi ten tup chir pang ba me par tan war cha. Tell <laughs> Here, mm. there is a very difficult aspiration here. Actually, each one of these are very, like the height of ambition, it's so difficult. But he says, may I, may I um, be the doctor, the medicine, the nurse of each and every ailing sentient beings until they recover. But I think for us, the most difficult one would be 
giving our body to others. And then he says, well, let them do whatever they want. I have dedicated. This is a good mental training because right now you're not, we're not, we're not in such a state to be able to do that. Probably not for a long time, but it's good to train in this now. Maybe after a couple of lives, you will be actually be able to do this, attempt this. That letting go of our attachment to this body. As he says, only by letting go of everything one can attain enlightenment. And I seek enlightenment. So then let them do what they want. It's none of my concern. During the history of Buddhism, I think our talk, we, we discussed six years, you know, um, ascetic lifestyle of Shakyamuni Buddha, where he, he practices one pointedly without even eating and drinking and sleeping and resting and bathing, um, even talking. So he becomes so weak um, that his skin became like old sunburnt leather, it is said in the text, and um, his eyes were not, eyes um, was like a um, light inside a deep well, <laughs> they were very deep. Anyway, Indian men have big eyes, much bigger than mine. Kind of beautiful, actually. And then now you, you have someone who have starved himself for years. So then it's like, we went all, sunk all the way in. And also his years, the holes of the years were big because he was, you know, there was no flesh. And wasn't it that children would come thinking that he's a corpse? We'll drag him along here and there. They would put twigs in his ears and try to drag him through his ears, like through that, those twigs, and it would bleed and it would be excruciatingly painful. But never did he entertain any malice towards these beings. Like he says, I have given this body, none of my concern. And whoever gets in con contact with me, may their wishes be fulfilled, may it not go to waste. As he says around the end. <clears throat> One time, someone asked me, I heard that you went crazy, like really clinically crazy when you were in Zongsa. Is it true? I had to think about it. I said, what? When did that happen? Did it happen? I don't know. When did you start asking? <laughs> Who would know? And I said, I don't think so. What? Who says such a thing? And they pointed me to a lady. She, said, she did. And I went to her and she asked her, is it true that you're telling people that I'm crazy? And she said, where are you not? Where are you not? And I said, I don't think so. I don't remember at the way going through such a thing. I mean, I would remember if you were like in a, in a hospital or something. And I asked her, like, who told you this? She said, someone did. I said, can I talk with this person? She said, no. <laughs> Can you tell me the names? Is I don't want to. 
Then this is what she said. If you are a good practitioner, this shouldn't bother you. <laughs> That's what she said to my face. If you are a good practitioner, this shouldn't bother you. And she went back to her doing her things. That was funny. I'm glad it happened. I can tell stories about it. Now, what comes next is, of course, all of these are very beautiful prayer now. All of this dedication, like, may I be the, what is it? Doctor, medicine, nurse, these are really beautiful. But what comes next is like the best among the best. Sometimes when you feel demotivated and feel useless, that's good. Sometimes when you feel useless, I guess it's just the days, you know, the days that you have to spend being alive. You have to do something. I don't know. It's just you feel useless, demotivated, uninspired. Recite these, these lines. Say, may I be the protector of those who are without protection, right? May I be the, um, what is it, the leader, the captain of those who are um, sort of on a path, journeying through treacherous road or through the dangerous sea. May I be the boat, the ship, the bridge for those who wish to go beyond samsara. May I be an island for those who need island to rest on the path. May I be a lamp for those who wish lamps. May I be a bedding for those who need bedding. I wish to serve all sentient beings. So may I be their slaves, says. May I be like, may I serve them like no one else, like, like the earth, may I support them, mm, like the wind, like fire, like the space, may I support them. Until, so how long, for how long? Oh, until each and every sentient being have reached the heart of liberation, May I serve them. Mm. So these are <clears throat> Especially in this day and age where you know, motivation is so weak and feeble, no one really wants to do anything. This kind of aspirations are so good. You should vandalize some walls somewhere in cities and write some stanzas here and there or pay these people who do these things. That will be money well spent. Imagine you are in a train stuck in a meaningless life too late for your dreams. And then you read such a thing, some random wall that says, may I be the protector of those who are without any protections. How amazing would that be? May I be the captain of those 
who are lost on their path. Hmm. May I serve all beings. May I be. In the translations, they try to avoid the term slave. There's nothing wrong with the term. Here, you're wanting to be a willing slave by yourself, your own wish. You want to. The reason why Shantideva used this term is that slave usually have no right to decide, oh, I will work today, I will not work. Similarly, through, through the great compassion, Bodhisattva have no right to decide anymore. They don't, it just doesn't work. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, these, make friends with these, really, they will, they will help you in, at odd times. Please recite until 22nd, 18th to 22nd. Tani kamen nam chikan, lam shuk nam chitepen tong, kalten nam chitu tong, sing the saman Ling tanya la ling tanya, marmeto la marmeto, nemal de la nemal to, tani luchin tende ba, kunji tende tuwa shuwas, ishin na tong pumbasa, ringa tuta minchin to, baksam chini shin ta to, luchin kunji de juru juru su, saso jungo chin ba to. Namkashin to Takmaria. Semchen Pato Mebai. Namon is to Shiriosho. Teshin Namke Tetope. Semchen Kamla Namkunto. Tamche Nangin Departo. Tanin is to Juriosho. Bodhicitta will also make you look very cool, by the way. Huh? I don't know. When you go somewhere. And then you... Like a gathering, and there's someone who is trying so hard to entertain everybody, you could just sit, sit back and let them do it. Just watch. Drink something nice and just watch. No need to, you don't have any wish to prove yourself. Why would you do that? You want to become the protector of those without protection. 
you have a bigger fish to fry? Yeah. <laughs> this, none of, this room is not your concern. It's just a visitor. Just enjoy. Automatically, you become the coolest person there. <laughs> oh gosh. Told you, Bodhisattvas are very, you know, it's a very clever way of being selfish. <laughs> You just let go of everything, then apparently you get things, nice things, real things. <laughs> anyway, I think we have a coffee or something here, it's cake time. It's, it's what we do here. It's one hour of practice and then food, <laughs> break and coffee and cake. Right, please. Is it is it really half an hour long, right? I remember something. All right, it's good enough. What are your plans? Give food to your cats? I don't know. All right, <laughs> see you. <clears throat> Where's the pause? We put shell up. Where is this coming what? from? Yes, it's Carol. Oh, yeah. What yes. time will we come back? I think 20 minutes is enough, isn't it? I think the, the timetable is half an hour or something. I guess in Brazil it's lunchtime. Lunchtime? Yeah, I'm not sure if half an hour would be okay for, or 20 minutes, it's okay. What does it say, Claudia? Mm. Half hour. Half hour? All right, half hour. Make something fast. Yes. Just don't buy it, just gobble it. You know. Okay. Who needs nutrition? <laughs> <laughs> just eat some bread. <laughs> Thank you, Infatua. Any questions so far? When did we start studying this ways of Bodhisattva? End, end of last year? Before the end of last year, right? Wow, still very fast. Because you guys are getting like steady flow of three videos per month. How it was made was different. They get sometimes like two a month, <laughs> if I feel like it. <laughs> <clears throat> so it took them oh, it's more than three, three years. Looks like it'll finish much faster with you guys. What are yes. you doing now in BP1? Entering the middle path. Is it like one book too? Yes. A bit shorter. Very important for the Madhyamika to understand Madhyamika view, Madhyamika understanding of karma and cause and effect and all that. Um, after that, then we will do the first eight chapters of 400 verses that's basically it's called um, conducts of yogi how a yogi should um, basically how a practitioner should look at things and that one is very strong sometimes weird it's just i'm interested in seeing your expressions when we go through that text 400 verses, then you really miss Shantideva. <laughs> because Shantideva, he, he doesn't, he doesn't sort of land blows, and he, he just, he cushions things, you know. Aradeva, he starts, I think, the text by saying, we are born to die like that. 
Can you shoot it? There is no prostration, praise to Buddha, nothing. <laughs> Just something like that. Ara Deva has no time. But it's, it's very, considered very important and, and it's really good. With this text and then that text together, you have like a complete conduct <clears throat> of Bodhisattva, quite complete. Mm, anyway, so then comes the taking the vow. Now this we will do tomorrow, properly we do tomorrow. Mm, now that we have been through the entire process, shouldn't take very long tomorrow. Um, so you should do that, you know? In one of those special days, you don't know what to do. What do I do? Take the vow. Full moon, special day of the Buddha or Tara or um, Guru Rinpoche or Dakini. You don't know what to do. Just take the vow. That's it. Bodhicitta is important. You see these murals like paintings where these Dakinis are holding something, these deities are holding like skull cup with some liquid. They call that Bodhicitta too. Same name is everywhere. So just take the vow. So vow itself, now in the Mahayana tradition, there are many different ways of taking the vow. Um, here we follow the um, tradition of um, Manjushri. Um, so the requirements are very low. If you are aware, some compassion and aspiration to work for others, if you can accept karma, Buddha Dharma Sangha as your object of refuge <clears throat> and wants to gain ultimate liberation for the sake of others, you can take the vow. That's all the requirements you need. Whereas in Chitta Matra tradition, um, you cannot take the vow so easily. There are many trainings. And so the implications are different here. After taking Bodhisattva vow, you, you must not do all the things that a Bodhisattva should do. It is actually in the vow that says, I will practice step by step. It's in the wording is exactly like that. Whereas in the Chitta Matra tradition, if you take the vow, if you take the vow of Bodhisattva, especially the application Bodhicitta, you have to do all of those things just like a monk or a nun cannot say, I take the vow of ordination of a nun, but you know, 200 something something restrictions is too much. Let me do just do 10 today. You cannot do it like that. From first moment, you have to follow all of those. No exception. Uh, so similarly with the Bodhisattva vow too in, in Chitta Matha tradition, there are things that you must do. If you take the vow, then you must. Whereas in the Madhyamika, it's more relaxed. It's for more general kinds of practitioner. But not to, not to be saying it's more diluted. It's because the view is more important than conduct here. The view is more important than conduct here. We should never forget this. Yes, those who misbehave will also use this, saying, oh, view is more important than conduct, and then they do whatever they want. But this does not dilute the truth. This does not change the truth, that view is the most important thing, more important than conduct. 
And so, um, here in the path, it's much more gentler. You can say more um, accepting, understanding, and um, in the stanzas, you can see it says, it's 23rd, 24th, just as all the Buddhas of the past have brought forth the awakened mind and in the precepts of the Bodhisattvas step by step abode and train. Likewise, for the benefit of beings, I will bring the I will bring to birth the awakened mind, and in those precepts, step by step, I will abide and train myself. Okay, so here the translator, what they're trying to say is bodhicitta when they say awakened mind. Um, so basically, just as the Buddhas of the past have taken bodhic bodhicitta and have practiced step by step. They didn't do everything from day one. Mm. Now that's realistic, realistic for us. So I too, you know, for the sake of beings, I too shall take the vow and practice according to my capacity, step by step. Um, this is so, so easy, really, truly easy to keep this vow. Of course, in the fourth chapter, um, we will learn about the downfalls too of not keeping the vow and is, you know, this is really bad. And, um, what is it? Um, it's like deceiving all sentient beings. But the thing is that to lose, losing bodhisattva vow is so difficult. Really, it's not like a monk's or a nun's vow, it's so easy. You want to lose a monk's vow? Just, oh, just take something from the table from someone else's house, put it in your pocket, keep walking. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> And oh, I stole something. That's it. How easy is that? Bodhicitta vow is not like that. To lose it, then you really have to think, I don't want to be a Bodhisattva. Or you really have to think like looking at someone, I don't want this person to become enlightened. I don't want this person to have any happiness in all the lives. This is difficult. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think we are capable of this. Most of us will not do that. Most of us are pretty soft people. We will not do that. I hope not. So it's, it's so easy to take and so difficult to lose. And then the better sort of the beautiful information is there and you can take it hundreds and thousands of times. No limit to that. Whereas else? Ordinations like monks and nuns vows, if you lose it once, it's gone. Unless you offer it, that's different. If you offer it, you can take it, I think, three times or seven times in your life. But bodhisattva vows, every time. There's no limitations to that. So this really is a path that is um, uh, really that yields an enormous result with so little risk and effort. Then, um, wait, we didn't read it, right? Please read the two stanzas. <clears throat> Contemplate, please.
23rd and 24th. Right. Then after this comes rejoicement or um, reassuring ourselves that we did the right thing. And also then um, making sure that we will keep the promise. Especially this one is very beautiful where he says, today I am born in the family of the Buddhas, in the caste or race of the, the Buddha. Today I have become an offspring of the Buddha. From now on, I will always do whatever that is proper to my family, whatever that is um, accepted by my family and to such a, this pristine race or family, I will not, I will not let it, I will not um, soil it. You see, Shanti, Shantideva is an Indian man. So for them, more than a thousand years ago, I guess all over the world must have been like that. Family, family name, race, caste, this is so important. Now he's talking to 10,000 Indian men at that, at that, and he was teaching this text. So, mm. but anyway, for us too, we want to belong, isn't it? Everybody wants to belong. We want, we want to be hugged and said, welcome home. You did good and pat and <laughs> so this is it. He says, this is where you belong now. You belong here. You belong to the family of Buddha. Meaning you will become Buddha in future. Whether you believe it or not, Cause and effect is oblivious to your wishes. When you put an egg in a boiling water, it will be boiled after some time. Regardless of what you want it to do, it will not follow what you believe, rather the course of causes and condition cause and effect. <clears throat> Similarly here too, when you take bodhicitta, even though 
you yourself may not really be able to see yourself as becoming Buddha one day, soon. Mm. It's irrelevant. Well, yeah, it's going to happen. That's what I want to say. Basically, it's going to happen. So, he says, Tering Sangir, Sangir says, Tajir. He says, um, Sengtepa, Semnitetar Sengtetor. Stanza 25th. Those who thus with clear intelligence take hold of the awakened mind with bright and lucid joy, that they may now increase what they have gained, should lift their hearts with praises such as these. It says, say these things to yourself. Today my life has given fruit. This human state has now been well assumed. Today I take my birth in human in Buddha's line and have become the Buddha's child and heir. In every way, then, I will undertake activities befitting such a rank, and I will do, and I will do no act to mar or compromise this high and faultless lineage. Sense of belonging, this is important. You will never feel alone if you have that. Um, no matter where you go, if you have this idea that Buddha, Dharma, Sangha are always with me, Yes, it's, it's a bit religious. Who cares? It's, um, um, <clears throat> and he's right when he says in the next stanza that 28, for I am like a blind man who has found a precious gem inside a heap of dust. For so it is by some strange chance that Bodhicitta has been born in me. What a picture. A blind man rummaging through dirt, probably looking for sustenance for food, <laughs> finds a precious Precious gem, that's us. How did we meet Dharma, most of us? Did we really want it to become Buddha? That's why we went to the Dharma teachings or read the first book? No, we were looking for something else. Something else. I know some guys who went to teaching to impress those pretty girls who go to the teachings. That's good, that's good. I've told, I've actually begged some girls who look really, really nice in good dresses. Can you please dress nicely? Bring, bring more guys to the teaching. <laughs> What's so wrong with that? Once they're there, then if the teacher is sincere and they're not really, you know, completely like brain dead, they begin to think. <laughs> oh, this Buddha guy, it makes sense, you know, not so bad. Some of the things Buddha has said, I think I can accept. That's good, that's good. Start it. Like a blind person finding treasure. I have. And where? Not in a nice place, no, in dirt, he says, in a pile of garbage. First of all, a blind person finding precious sort of jewel, very difficult. And then in a pile of garbage, even more difficult. And just as the blind person may not understand that they have found a precious jewel, we also do not really understand that we have found this precious jewel. 
I'm sure you try to convince yourself that yes, this bodhicitta is really precious. But most of the time we don't really believe it. Not being able to believe is, is a real problem. Not being able to believe that this mind of awakening, this wish, aspiration of awakening is really actually it's all you need truly everything else come by itself as long as you keep this wish mm. and it's difficult to believe that something that you have created can bear some bear such a result Some of us may not even realize that we do not believe it. That bodhicitta. Here, in the, around the end of the second chapter, no, end of the first chapter, Shanti Deva says, Kala Simji Thambar Rinji De Keba Kula Chatsar says, to whoever, you no. Know, Whoever has such a precious mind, whoever has generated such a precious mind, I make prostrations to their feet. Shanti Deva made prostrations to you, all of you. How does that feel? I told you, it's difficult to believe. Am I really prostration worthy for, from Shantideva? Buddhas can, should also, can also make prostrations to you because you are bodhicitta. Hard to believe. What crazy talk. Hmm. We are blind. You see now. We really truly are blind. Like a blind finding precious jewel in a pile of garbage and not knowing that they have found a precious jewel in a pile of garbage. <clears throat> mm. So then again, he goes on praising Bodhicitta now that. Please read the stanzas. Mm. Where were we? Are? From 25th, stanza number 25 until, until the last, yeah, till the end of the chapter. Tibetan translation is so good. It's kept so simple. They hardly ever use complicated words. That's the beauty of this text. So it irritates me when I see in the English some they use some fancy words. It's, this is not good. <clears throat> beauty of Shantideva is was like that. <laughs> Come, some very 
Nyokpar mejur tetar jas. Nongwe cakter pun boleh. Jadar rencinya patar. Tesen cecut tar tene. Cangjub sem di talat je. Tapi cida cangjub. Tuti cangjang tino. Tapi ulas selway. Mizet teriang tino. Dewi nerap si cepi, menti cucang tino, silam cangsing tupai. Dewi ngan si cucing ini, doa tamjeng ini dulu, dulu ar cepi kita kip. Dewi nyemong dong sel, semje tawa syawain. Dewi masih rap rap tam, cici ni macam boy. Tak cukup masuk sebalik. Mereka ni aku cuma ins. Tua itu masih belum tahu. Tapi orang tu cipar dia balam. Tiada tiada cukup ni ada. Semacam rencan semula cipar. Tapi tering coba tak cuci. Jangan rujuk desa ni tak ni. Baru tu dia la dua dua persen je. Lada lamin langsung gawat ke. So, if you could believe, then you should that the bodhicitta that you have within you, that you, that this part of your mind, this is it. This is the the supreme nectar that defeats mm, the death of sentient beings. He says, "This is." Uh, never-ending treasure that removes all the poverty of beings. This is the supreme medicine that removes all sickness of beings. For sentient beings who are torn, tired, having walked upon the treacherous road of samsara, part of samsara for a long time this bodhicitta that you have within you now is like this beautiful grove or beautiful tree that provides shade and sustenance for them this bodhicitta that you have This bodhicitta that we have is really, truly like a chitek. You can understand it like a public transport, trans, transport that um, how trains and buses and planes carry, can carry hundreds of people in one sort of effort. Similarly, bodhicitta is like that. It really is like the rising of full moon in india when it's very hot in um, you know during daytime is so hot 
and you get burned. And then comes moon, full moon. It's so soothing. People really like to sit outside. We used to sleep outside when there's nice moons. So, Bodhicitta has such soothing. Um, Bodhicitta really is like rising a full moon that removes the pain of afflictions, he says. <clears throat> Bodhicitta is like the rising of sun that removes the darkness of ignorance. I think you can understand these two, the example of moon and example of sun for relative bodhicitta and ultimate bodhicitta. <clears throat> sun is more befitting for ultimate bodhicitta. <clears throat> and so, What was the main essence of Buddha's teaching? Whatever that you have in you now, that's this one, he says. This one is like the butter of having churned, um, after churning all 84,000 84, teachings of the Buddha. This is the essence now. Mm. Then the fourth chapter. Now we have taken bodhicitta. The first, second, and third chapter is dedicated towards taking bodhicitta, generating bodhicitta. Mm. And now fourth, fifth, and sixth is dedicated towards making sure that the bodhicitta that we have taken, we have generated, it, it does not wane, it does not grow weak, and it is not lost. Maintenance, basically. So the first, um, fourth and fifth chapter, it's a chapter of discipline. First, second, third chapter, you can say is about mainly about generosity especially the second chapter, huge chunk is dedicated to um, towards um, making offering, right? And third, third and fourth chapter for discipline, fifth chapter, sorry, so fourth and fifth chapter for discipline, sixth chapter for tolerance, patience, seventh chapter for diligence, Eighth chapter for meditation, ninth, chap ninth chapter for wisdom, tenth is then overall dedication. <clears throat> Until here, Shantideva, he does not talk about um, the downfalls, failures. He only talks about the good thing. He's you know, he's a good salesman. So, so oh, Bodhicitta, you want to, you want to generate merit. While for being, while sleeping, this is it. You come here. You want to generate merit, right? So strong that you do not fall in lower realms. This is it. You come here. Now, with the fourth chapter, and it is named Bhayoba. Bhayoba is then meaning um, being cautious. Being careful, Bhayapa. Being alert, right? So, Javisthi Jitheta Bhurshan, Jusim Rabtin Sona, Yelva Me Bharatadu, Lovely Mita Bebar Chas. The chapter starts with the first stanza. that those who have taken the bodhicitta now should grasp on it firmly so that it does not without distraction, without uh, 
sort of um, without any failure. Try not to fall from the discipline of bodhicitta. He says, let me the beverages. This is important. And so the pride, I am a bodhisattva, is very good, very important. You should have that. Sometimes, you know, wherever you are, sometimes when you step into a new place, think, Maybe I'm the first Bodhisattva here. Maybe I'm the first person who, who, who ever stepped foot here, who has taken Bodhicitta. Maybe you're wrong. That doesn't matter. What matters is you being aware of it, that you have Bodhisattva well. And that's beautiful. Sometimes, you know, could be in a train, just thinking, oh, Maybe I am the only one who even understands such concept here. It's not bad. Just don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> then that, that would not be good. But it's good to build up courage like this. Courage. Um, Courage that is born out of humility is what we need. When you really understand yourself, you understand your shortcomings, and then you understand the marvelous qualities of bodhicitta. From there, if you can generate courage, it's really good, I think. Or at least having wish that maybe these beings well, let's say you are sitting somewhere. Maybe they have never come across anyone that has bodhicitta till now through beginningless of time. And this is the first time you are the only contact for them with bodhicitta. And it's just this. It's just this boring, sleepy airport, sort of everybody waiting for the flight announcement. And that's it. That's all they get. It's as close as they're going to get to bodhicitta for a very long time. It changes, it shifts things, changes perception. So basically, like when you fall in love, or when you fall in love, have you fallen in love? <laughs> okay, some of you did this. Boo-hoo. <laughs> You think about that person all the time, no? I even, I, I have said this many times, as, as a, you know, growing up in India, watching a lot of Bollywood movies, old Bollywood movies, they have this thing where the guy is like thinking about the girl, like, oh, that girl, and her face is floating in the space, like, uh, like 10 of her face going round and round and round, that's what we need. Exactly that. But bodhicitta. Just, just, you know, like just, just be like, oh, bodhicitta, how amazing. If only, like you see, you see a snail so weak. How weak is this being? A snail can get trampled upon, can't even run away from ants, nothing. It's useless. But if they had bodhicitta, if only they would have bodhicitta, even for a moment, the next life, for sure, a very special life. Just like that. Doesn't take a lot of effort. To be in love, with bodhicitta, to be in love with Buddha. That's what we need. Um, mm. <clears throat> um. 
From the second stanza till eighth, st eighth stanza, very important, makes us realistic, these stanzas. Kanch <laughs> Tamjin, Tenny Changjub Sembala, don't we numb to Chivate, did our tenny chung to a simpton quinji turn up men's. Now, he is urging us to be consequent. <clears throat> when we look for things and we analyze, when we are searching, seeking, we may be very inspired and it's new and exciting. And... But most of the time, most of us, when we actually find what we're looking for, then slowly, slowly, we lose our inspiration. He says, do not do that here. He urges the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas have analyzed for many lives, what is the best way of benefiting beings? And this is what they have found. You yourself has thought, what should I do? Does it even make sense? And after thinking, you have taken this vow, you have accepted it, that this is it. This is what I need. This is going to liberate beings. This is what's going to liberate me. This is what's going to protect my parents, my children. Long after we part from this life, After having done all that analysis and thinking, and then you finally got it. You got the bodhicitana. If you have it. Now, he says, don't lose it. This is very different, he says. It's been, it's the result of um, of countless of great minds um, sort of um, seeking what is the best way to benefit beings. This is it. They couldn't come, they couldn't, they couldn't find better than this. 
this is it even the sarab the taravada friends brothers and sisters they have to admit bodhicitta bodhisattva without this without these there will be no buddha they admit that siddhartha was not looking for to become arhat siddhartha was not looking to become a pratyeka buddha he was looking to become a samyak sambud sam completely awakened buddha so um he says oh, and of course then in mahayana and vajrayana there's no place to go you you cannot you cannot go anywhere without bodhicitta you could be practicing the highest i don't know what kind of weird teachings this vajrayana seem to have you can be doing anything minus bodhicitta it's useless could even bring rebirth in lower realms if there is no bodhicitta has happened many times there was a great not great but a very strong meditator he practiced this deity called he vajra in tibet that man was miserly a real tibetan scrooge isn't it scrooge scrooge and there was i think famine and so on and he had this huge store of grains and food but he just won't give it. anyway there was at some point there was a huge dispute and he was murdered by the people and with his death wish while he was being killed he he died with anger and it is said that he became such a powerful hungry ghost and he killed so many people so many masters the brazilians believe in ghost right ghost who believes in ghost <laughs> except you guys germans don't believe in ghost <laughs> no this guy really did a lot of damage people are still afraid of him because he did not have bodhicitta he forgot that part the most important cause of enlightenment of liberation that is the bodhicitta my fly was open nobody told me gosh the terror <laughs> so um this is what he says that what are you waiting for and you have made a this promise to liberate all sentient beings make effort um because if you don't if you just let go if you just let it die you are then what do you call it um lying to all sentient beings that is true because you just said i will liberate all beings that was you your promise your words and then what are you doing after that nothing well then that is not keeping the promise these are important this is important again because that's what we do most of the time we work so hard to receive teachings that's nice but now what after that and also to counter what he said in the first chapter where he said oh you fall asleep do whatever you want merit will grow then <laughs> then we become some people think oh that's nice you know <laughs> 
Then he says, wait, 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 you have to do something. He says, something, small things, but something. Because, yes, it's in the, what is it, what does it say? That I will take the vow and practice step by step. So you have to take a step, at least a small step, at least lift your feet. So, um, and he goes on and on, and he gives really good reasonings. He says, if you I wasn't supposed to explain like this. Please read. Stanza number four until. Oh, you already read that, I think. Then, from stanza number nine. Till twelve. Yeah. 당신 기적사면 뒤 손은 빠지겠지 봐. 심장 떠나. Simchin, chiki tawaya, shik na toni nyamjan. Nam ka mali tali, lujen de shik me chik. Tetar tung atop den tong, changjup sem tong den bata. Korwar reji tejan, sato palo juring tong. Tete, jitar tam che shin, taki kube dubarja. Teng ni tsumbar majin, hone hodu to. Mm. And then thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth. Yeah. Keep reading. Until the 23rd, 13th until 23rd, where he talks about all the chances that we have missed until now. He says, countless unnumbered Buddhas have already lived and passed away. Where was I? What was I doing? Right? That nothing happened to me. I must have been somewhere doing something. I have missed countless of chances until now. And if I keep doing the same thing, I will not get a different result. I will get the same result of pain and bondage, wounds and lacerations in the lower realms. Mm -hmm. 
So, and also, these opportunities are rare. Appearance of Buddha in this world is a rare. Meeting the Buddha, Dharma Sangha, and having devotion is rare. Having a human, precious human body is very rare. Having a mm, yeah, compassion and this is so rare. If not now, they will not, I probably will not get them again. All of these things to come together like this. Yeah, please read until 23rd. Then <laughs> Kalti tagi tet on Mombe Chijan Jilona Chivar Juga teaches Nyang in Chamber Dower Jurus. Now, when I have such opportunity, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> precious human body, and I can accumulate merit with just a mere thought, without moving one finger, I can accumulate merit, enormous merit, and make purifications. And I don't do that. What can be more? Stupefying. What, what can be more foolish than that? What can be more deceiving than that?
as I was saying, I'm sure I was saying in those videos, that at the end of the day, now you want to be a lazy bodhisattva, that's your choice. Be that. But know that. Mm. Moment you have taken bodhicitta, you are guaranteed to become Buddha. <clears throat> and already, there are countless of beings lined up to become your disciples, become those who will be liberated by you. So your laziness prolongs their liberation, sort of <laughs> samsara, that's all. Your laziness postpones their liberation. Maybe that helps. Some sort of sense of urgency. Some became Buddha after three countless aeons. Some became Buddha after 33 countless aeons. You know, think about that. <clears throat> And we, all of us, or most of us, have Vajrayana. Vajrayana. Wow. It will not be there all the time. Buddhas, right? Arrival of Buddhas are very rare. Arrival of Buddhas who teach Vajrayana is even rarer. If the Buddhas are like stars in the night sky, clear autumn night sky, moonless night sky, billions of them, Buddhas who teach Vajrayana are like the amount of stars you can see during daytime during daylight, almost impossible. Why do you think so many Buddhas took them so long to become enlightened? They never got to receive Vajrayana. You have it. You can have it. This will never come back again. And even if you are reborn, you are reborn as a human being after 20, 30, 40, 50, 80 years. What kind of Dharma will remain then? What kind of, what types of teacher will be there then? What kind of person will you be, will you be then? Mm, very difficult when you think about all this. The way it is going, Vajrayana will soon be labeled as a cultish, something very cultish, something where the followers lose all control, like, very weird which is good for Vajrayana, it should be. It should be shunned, it should be doubted. It's not, it's not like a buffet, everybody is welcome, you know. It's not good. But then it also means it will be difficult to find. <laughs> so we have that now. Mm. Yeah. Then he talks about regret. If we don't do it now, if we do not act, from twenty fourth. 
stanza number 24. If having understood all this, I am stupidly despondent still, then at the moment of my death, my sorrows will, my sorrows will be black indeed. And when my body burns so long in fires of hell, so unendurable, my mind, there is no doubt, will also be tormented, burned in fires of unendurable regret. Hmm. For it's as if by chance that I have gained this state so hard to find, wherein to help myself. If now, while having such discernment, I am once again consigned to hell, I am as if benumbed by sorcery, as if reduced to total mindlessness. I do not know what dulls my wits. Oh, what is it that has me in its grip? 27th, this is really, it's really like that. Wow. We are so weak, so distracted. How many times you go to a Dharma teaching or event thinking, I'm going to practice now, this time I'm really going to do it. But what happens? You make friends, you get sleepy, you, 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 miss, <laughs> you miss sessions, you, I don't know, you fall in love and go to parties, all the things, goofy things people do. At the end of the day, Dharma is the last thing that you're concerned with. <laughs> <clears throat> As the Kongtu Rinpoche says, Thambo Samju Chule Me Bala, Thamma Dukju. Like, initially, all that we think about is that for Dharma, I'm going to there for Dharma. I'm going to do this for Dharma. But at the end, all we accumulate, manage to do is more, create more mundane existence. So it's really true. He says, what happened to me? Did someone put a hex on me, like a, a sorcery? What is this? How come I become so mindless, so stupid, dull, and dumb? What happened to my wits? <laughs> because it's not believable. That it just happened like this without <laughs> any external cause. There must be some sort of somebody doing something. <clears throat> Shanti, they were being sarcastic. There's nobody, no Mara sitting on a big elephant in front of you, blocking your way, nobody. It's just you, it's just me, it's us. That's it, it's um, very boring actually. That would be interesting if every time you want to practice and then there's like some daughters of Mara jiggling things in front of you or for the ladies, I don't know, some of you ladies, I don't know, whatever that you want to be jiggled in front of you. That could be interesting, like, okay, now really, I can point at this, they are my enemy. But it's not like that, it's too boring. No one is interested in your practice. Nobody cares. <laughs> it's you who, who make your own problem. Can <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Someone raised hand. Yes, Amelia. Rinpoche, how do we know if bodhicitta is being cultivated? I mean, is there are there ways, like if I if I manage to look at difficult, I see as difficult people and really say, I'm gonna bring you, help you towards enlightenment. Is this a and be honest with that. Is this is this a, a test? How do we know we are not kind of stuck, reading and not getting anywhere? <clears throat> if you still get inspired, thinking about bodhicitta, goosebumps, it's working. If you hmm, If 
you, you are not in a mood to practice. But then you sit down, begin contemplating on bodhicitta and compassion and how beings are in need. And that rekindles your inspiration. And your mind becomes potent again. That means it's working. Simple things like that. There are so many hundred thousands of signs that can tell us that it's working. And yes, looking at a difficult person and thinking, oh, may you become enlightened. May I be able to strive for your enlightenment for many, many lives. That's good. Kinsa Rinpoche, Zongsa Kinsa says, if you could look at someone, someone difficult or not, and think, may I be able to really strive for your liberation? And if that means that you will be willing to um, know about the reality. You'll be willing to hear Dharma after many, many thousands of lives for only 10 minutes. May I be able to wait? He says, may I be able to just wait and watch for thousands of lifetimes? Yeah, it's not so difficult to think like that. Of course, in practice, very difficult, but. Okay, what else? If you guys go to somewhere special, to Bodh Gaya, Lumbini. And if you decide to recite this text, wow. I cannot even explain what it will mean. You can really feel the entire surrounding becoming alive. Sometimes do that, you know, when you have your stupa nearby, just go to stupa, recite this text quietly. <clears throat> even if you're not inspired, even if you're sort of sleepy, just throw some cold water on your face and recite it. First chapter, you felt nothing. Second chapter, nothing. Maybe around fourth, fifth chapter, something will catch. That's all you need. Okay. I think the prayer session starts at eight. So that's after one hour, right? All right. Who's translating now for this session? Gustavo, okay. Dedication. By this merit, having attained omniscience and defeated the enemy of wrongdoing, may I free all beings from the ocean of existence with its tumultuous waves of birth, old age, sickness, and death. 
just as the heroic Manjushri, who knows everything as it is, and as Samantha Badra likewise did too, just so to follow all of them and train myself, I perfectly dedicate these meritorious actions. May the precious Supreme Bodhicitta arise in those in whom it has not arisen. Having arisen, may it not diminish, but ever expand more and more. As long as space remains, as long as the world remains, may I too remain to alleviate the suffering of the world. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, this prayer book, is it, is it the one that we decided, right, Karu? Okay. Mm. Do you have the combined prayer that we decided during? The homage to Tara? Yeah, just the, the other one with King of Aspirations. You don't I have, can right? send. I can send to them. Yes, please send it to all. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. See you guys after an hour. Do your things. <laughs>